There are planet-wide dust storms on Mars. Just like on Earth, wind constantly blows on Mars, grinding away at the geology. The wind creates a lot of dust, which eventually gets whipped up into large clouds. Those dust clouds absorb sunlight and heat up, making the winds more intense. Without any rain or oceans, every few years, the clouds grow so large that they wrap around the entire planet and create a giant dust storm. In 2018, the Curiosity rover witnessed one of these great storms from the Martian surface. It noted that sunlight on the planet decreased by 97%, and many large sand dunes were left behind after the storm ended. Mars is home to the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. The giant volcano is 14 miles tall. That's about two and a half times the size of Mount Everest. The volcano was formed millions of years ago a time when Mars was covered with countless volcanoes, spewing molten lava across the planet's surface. Olympus Mons is a shield volcano. So rather than spitting out lava and flames up into the air, lava would flow slowly down the sides of the volcano. This gives it its low, squat appearance and an average slope of only 5%. At only a few million years old, Olympus Mons is still a fairly young volcano. Because of this, scientists believe that it could potentially still be active. So, maybe it could erupt at some time in the future. There are three other massive shield volcanoes on Mars, called Tharsis Montes. By Earth standards, they're humongous, ranging from 233 to 295 miles in diameter. They're not as tall as Olympus Mons, though, the highest peak there being 9.2 miles. Despite its dusty and rusty appearance, Mars is still a geologically active planet. There are even Mars quakes. The tectonic plates under the surface of the planet move from time to time, shaking the ground. The largest known fault on Mars is called Valles Marineris. It's a 2,500-mile-long canyon system that makes the Grand Canyon on Earth look like a dwarf. In August 2021, the InSight robotic lander detected a Mars quake with a magnitude of 4.2 that started from the huge canyon, which confirmed it to be active still. There's convincing evidence that Mars once had liquid water on and beneath its surface. For one, the Opportunity rover found rock spiracles not far away from its landing site. Their shape, position, and mineral content strongly suggest that they could only be formed in a watery environment. So they must have been formed in pools of water in the ancient times, likely billions of years ago. Second, there are grooves in the Martian soil that are very much indicative of water streams, which might have run along the planet's surface. It's been an unimaginable amount of time since they were there, and all those streams have long since dried out, but the channels they left behind them prove there was once actual rivers of liquid water. The sunrise and sunset on Mars are bluish-gray. There have been several photos of them taken since the 1970s, the very first one made by the Viking 1 lander in 1976. It showed rusty red rocks on the Martian ground and a pale yellow sky, much paler than it usually is. The Sun is much farther away from Mars than it is from Earth, which makes it look about a third smaller. The numerous particles of red dust in the atmosphere make the sky appear orange, sometimes even closer to red. But at dawn and dusk, the situation changes. The blue light penetrates the atmosphere a bit better than the rest of the spectrum, directly where the sun is in the sky. It's especially obvious at sunset, with the light having to fight through more dust particles when coming from just above the horizon. The dust is fine enough to let more blue light through, the situation exactly opposite to that on Earth, where blue light is almost blocked by particles in the atmosphere, making sunsets all kinds of pink, orange, and red. At dawn, it's much the same on Mars only the sky often appears more gray than blue. And twilights are much longer after sunset and before sunrise on the red planet, because there's a lot of fine dust high up in the atmosphere. It scatters more light into the night part of the sky, making the twilight last up to two hours after sunset or before actual dawn. Such long twilights sometimes happen on Earth, too. When a powerful volcano erupts ash and dust high up into the atmosphere, It scatters in the sky and can cause twilights lasting much longer for some time. They're also the reason for extremely vibrant sunrises and sunsets. The Curiosity rover found a site scientists call Yellowknife Bay. This site once contained an ancient lake. The rover discovered materials left behind from the waters, 
showing that the lake water was not too acidic or too salty. It would have had a balanced pH. Carbon, nitrogen, and other elements that could potentially support life were all found within the crater of the ancient lake. And most important of all, Curiosity found potential sources of energy for microbial life. So, maybe there could be life on Mars after all. Mars' atmosphere was once much thicker, which was precisely the reason why there used to be liquid and flowing water on its surface. In the past few billion years, though, scientists believe the Sun has been striking the atmosphere of the red planet, slowly but steadily removing its outer layers. The solar winds must have been hitting the atmosphere hard enough for the lighter hydrogen molecules from the top layers to be scattered and drawn into outer space. With time, this could have caused the atmosphere to become thinner and thinner, until it wasn't thick enough to support flowing water. And that was likely the time Mars had started turning into the rusty red and barren planet we know today. At some point in the future, Mars might get rings like Saturn. Scientists believe the rings around the gas giant might have appeared after a moon or even several ones got too close to Saturn and got ripped apart. It's their rock and ice debris now orbiting in close proximity to the planet. Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, and the former is doomed. Mars attracted them both from outer space with its gravity long ago, and they've since been locked in the planet's orbit. But while Deimos has a constant orbit, Phobos gets steadily closer to Mars with every turn. For clarity, our Moon goes a full orbit around Earth roughly every 27 days, while the planet itself rotates around its axis every 24 hours. The Moon slows down the rotation of Earth and slowly gets away from us to compensate for that. Phobos, on the contrary, goes around Mars in a full orbit about every 8 hours, while it takes Mars 25 hours to rotate around its axis. Basically, Phobos makes three full turns around its planet in a single day. At such a rate, it makes Mars rotate more quickly and compensates for that with getting closer and closer to its planet. According to calculations, Phobos has from 30 to 50 million years left before it enters the Roche limit, the point at which the tidal forces between the Moon's near and far sides are so different they literally tear it apart. Phobos will be destroyed and scattered in the orbit of Mars as numerous asteroids, and those will crumble into even smaller pieces. Eventually, the red planet will gain its own ring, just like Saturn. But that won't be the end of it. Mars's gravity will pull this space debris in, resulting in a hailstorm of falling rocks and metal on its surface. Despite Mars being 140 million miles away from us on average, pieces of it can be found on Earth too. Some very long time ago, Mars was bombarded with asteroids, hence the craters on its surface. Its weak atmosphere still allows space bodies inside but that's not a frequent event nowadays. Back in the day, though, some asteroids were so big, they raised clouds of debris high up into the atmosphere. Most of it fell back to the surface of Mars, but some pieces were ejected into space. And certain ones were large and sturdy enough to enter the Earth's atmosphere and fall on the ground without disintegrating. Scientists have found plenty of such space rocks, and they're pretty sure they came to us all the way from Mars, because their composition is similar to the samples examined by the mission sent to the Red Planet. By the way, there's some chance that pieces of ancient Earth might also be found on other planets, Mars included. Hey, we get around, don't we? Given that millions of years ago Earth was also struck by powerful asteroids, some debris from those impacts might have traveled into outer space in a similar way.